Hi everybody, this is Tegan with Rehatch Designs. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, this is just going to be a quick little video. Um, I'm trying out some new things that I got. And this is a die kit that I bought. I think I showed it on my haul video. Um, this is for tie-dye. It was a relatively inexpensive kit. And I'll put the link in the description box. I think it was under uh, $14. And the reason I bought this is that I am in the midst of uh, making my boho journals and I want um, quite a few different colors of lace and trim and things to use. And I, I know I can dye them with um, like the RIT dye, the big bottles, but they're, you know, anywhere from six to eight to nine dollars a piece. And then even the packages can be five or six dollars. And I don't need that much. So I thought, well, here's a great way for me to do this very inexpensively. Um, I'm showing these feathers just to give you an idea of the types of colors that I want, just because I think um, I can get a good variety of colors and it'd be very inexpensive, um, you know, for pennies versus, you know, dollars. And I know you can use your um, distress inks and your alcohol inks and things like that, but they're not that inexpensive and um, I'm trying to find a cheaper way to accomplish the same thing. So anyway, I thought maybe I would um, bring you along with me. I've never done this before. I think I did tie dyeing years and years ago, but um, we're not going to be doing tie dyeing. And I figured this was the most cost effective way. And honestly, um, you get like 36 colors in this little kit and um, even though it just makes a small little bottle, um, for the most part, I think um, each little bottle will last quite a long time and I'll get a lot out of it. So it should be very, very cost effective. Anyway, um, from reading the directions, it looks like it's really, really simple. So um, I thought I would just bring you along and you can see what we're doing here. Um, the kit gives you directions on how to tie dye. We don't need that. It gives you these little labels. Uh, for all the different colors, which I will use later. Um, it comes with all these little bottles um, and they have a little shaker top. Um, you know, it's like a top that goes on that you squeeze and then another top on top of it. It has little funnels. It comes with um, plastic aprons, which would be good, but I'm not going to use them. I have old clothes on and it comes with some gloves and I, I have my own gloves, but that's handy. Um, these are all of the little um, packages of the dye and all it really says to do is to um, put the dye in and add water. It doesn't say warm water or anything else. So let's just see how it works. We're going to do a red, a yellow and a blue just to kind of give you a variety of how it might work here. And I am just going to do what it says to do. Um, so I'm just pouring it in the bottle and I just snip the edges of it. And I, I would suggest wearing gloves because when you get dye on your hands, it can take a really long time to get it off. Um, anyway, so I'm going to fill this up to about three quarters. Um, it's said to fill line, but I couldn't find a fill line on the bottle, but I'm doing it, um, about three quarters of the way. That way it gives it, um, a little bit of room when you shake it so and I'm just approximating I'm not measuring and the little funnel comes in handy and now I'm putting the top that it's a double top so it has a screw top and then another top that goes on top of it and make sure it's shut good shake it up really really good and it says to use it um, 45 minutes after but um, I don't see a reason why you couldn't keep these and use them. And I, I think what I'm going to do is I'll be um, testing this out in about a week. I'm going to use these uh, today and then I'm going to go ahead and try and use them again and see if, if there's any difference. And I'll let you know because I, I really can't see why you wouldn't be able to store these and use them. I don't, I don't see how they would go bad. Other dyes... Um, that I've used before fabric dyes you can keep them so I don't see why these would necessarily be different 
Um, probably you would just need to, um, you know, uh, shake them up really good. So I'm going to do all three of these colors and I'm just doing them the same way and shaking it up. Um, the one thing that I would suggest while you're doing this is um, just to um, make sure that you have plenty of gloves because when you go from one color to the next, um, you probably want to change your gloves or at least wipe your gloves off or wash your hands off or something because you can contaminate each color. Um, so anyway, now I'm going to do my last color and you can just see how easy this is. It's not hard. I mean, if you wanted to, you could mix all 36 colors, but I don't see that I'm going to do that. I'm going to mix probably, you know, six or eight colors and then um, see what I need and um, go from there. Um, some of the colors are kind of similar and um, we'll just see what I, you know, I'll kind of just play, play as I go and then see what colors I'm going to need. So anyway, here's the last color and this is a yellow. And the other thing too, these colors are really bright. Um, if you want to tone these colors down and want them to be a little bit more vintage, um, after they dry, you could go ahead and add a little bit of like a, a distress ink color diluted or you could just um, add some coffee staining or even there is a brown in here and you could use that and dilute that and maybe add that, make it look a little duller. Um, I'm going to leave it bright and use it as I go. If I need to distress it, I will. What I showed you is I'm going to get out some sandwich bags and um, what I'm doing is I'm cutting up some different pieces of lace and trim and I mainly like to use um, white and dye it. I've, I used to buy different colors and I always end up disappointed in the color. It's not the right color. Um, anyway, what I usually do is I, I, I go ahead and I get the white and even if I just want to make it off white or anything like that, I tend to uh, like to dye it on my own because I can get, I can make the color I want and it usually turns out a lot better. But anyway, I'm just cutting up different types of lace and trim and um, fabrics and things like that just to see how it reacts. Now, what's going to happen on any kind of dye is it's always going to be different um, based on what um type of fabric or what the trim is made out of. If it's cotton, it'll absorb differently than the uh, nylon or the synthetic. So, you know, you just kind of have to play with it and see how it's going to work. Um, I like the varied color. I like if it's not absolutely perfect. Um, you know, to me, that makes it look a little bit more authentic and old and whatever. But you know, that's, that's just kind of how I like it, but you certainly can work with these and make them absolutely, you know, um, saturated perfectly with the color, but I personally like a little bit of variation in it. So anyway, I'm just dividing up some more little pieces, um, of different types of, uh, lace and trim. And I'm mainly doing lace and trim today because that's what I'm going to use. Um, you definitely could use, do it with fabric. Um, you could do it with um, sari silk. Um, in fact, I, I'm going to do some with some sari silk because, but I, I like to do the sari silk separately because it actually takes the dye differently and I like the varied um, color with it. So I will definitely show you that um, when I do it. So anyway, now what I'm going to do is I'm taking um, this stuff that I, uh, cut up and I'm putting it in separate baggies for each color that I'm going to do. And um, I like to use baggies when I do this because when I work with different colors, um, it's very easy to contaminate uh, one color with the other. And also, I like to um, put uh, the bulk of the color in the baggie. Um, now, what you're seeing now is I'm spritzing each of these um, pieces of lace and I'm, I'm just trying to get them damp, not necessarily saturated. 
And what that'll do is that'll spread the color around a lot better than if it's completely dry. If it's completely dry, it'll turn out more blotchy. And what I do is I put a little bit of color in the bag and then I kind of make sure the air is out of the bag, otherwise you pop it. And then you just kind of spritz it and with the color and then move it around with your hands. And I do that for a while and then I realize for the most part, I'll, I'll do that and then get all the color in there. And then I usually wind up taking it out and rolling it in my hands. So, um, and the reason I do that is that it tends to um, do better in my hands. Now I'm just taking like one piece and I'm putting it in there because I don't think it, it got enough uh, color on it. And I put a little water in there with it too. And you just kind of have to work it. Putting, I put the color on in the bag so that it wouldn't make a mess. Um, it's just easier to use it with the bags, I think. But um, I tried just dyeing them in the bags and I don't know, I couldn't get them uh, to distribute the color as well as when I would take them out and roll them in my hand some. Um, you know, I've seen people that they do them just in the bag and I don't, I don't know, it doesn't work that well for me when I do that. So I suppose if I put more color in there, um, maybe it would work better, but it, you know, it's just not going to do that. So anyway, so I'm going to just keep adding and rolling until I get to the color that I want. And red is a really, really hard color to get um, kind of a deep red color. It's, it's super hard, I think. Um, if you've ever tried to do like a Christmas red or something, it's next to impossible. Um, that's one of the colors if I want a really deep, rich color. I usually just purchase it red because I can't get it that color. But this is going to get to a color more of a, like a magenta um, then, and I, and I know that I'll, I will like it. Um, this is, what was it called? Um, it is called Coral Red. So it's not quite a, a deep red. It's, you know, has a coral to it. And I think this does look true to the color. So I think, um, I think I'm okay with it. Now the cotton piece of material is going to take more dye because it absorbs the color a lot more. So I have to work with that. And also, um, a lot of times on cotton, you'll have to make it wetter. Um, you know, add more water to it to kind of smush it around. And you'll see some little white specks in there. And I kind of like that. So I'm probably going to leave that the way it is. And then this last color, I'm going to wet it more. I don't think it has enough color on it. And I'm going to go ahead and roll that around in my hands. And honestly, I've only put a few drops on this out of this bottle. I don't even think I've used um, more than like 10 drops total. So, you know, it's not even a fourth of what we started out with. And, you know, I think that's pretty good if you think about the fact that you're getting 36 bottles and it's, you know, one bottle will probably work for at least four different dyeing sessions. So you're basically um, dyeing this lace and trim for pennies. So that's way more cost effective than a lot of other ways you could do it. So anyway, so now I'm going to take another color. I'm going to go ahead and do it with that. And basically, we're just going to do the same thing. I put different gloves on um, just because I knew that there was no way I could get all of that red off of my hands. Um, and I spilled a little of the blue on the, my mat, so I'm going to pick it up. And again, you know, using um, the bag is probably why I like doing that so you don't spill it everywhere. <laughs> So you can put the color in the bag and then smush it around and then take it out and work with it. But most of the mess will stay in the bag. And if you're going to be doing this stuff, it is messy. So, you know, oh gosh, I really love that blue. I think it's really pretty. Um, 
I think it turned out really good. And honestly, this is a very cost-effective way to get different colors lace and trim and things like that. If you find a good deal um, and this way it, um, it looks really kind of, I don't know, a little bit less, um, I don't know, a little less, you know, store bought. It looks a little bit homemade because the color may vary a little bit. And I think it gives it a good look. So I like it when it's not perfect. Um, you know, that's just kind of my preference. But anyway, you, you will see that you can have a very, very uh, big stock of colors, you know, for very little. So, well, that turned out, I think, really, really good. I'm really happy with those. And really the important thing to me is um, getting the water on there is really important. It just helps spread the color around. So I'm putting the stuff back in the bag. I kind of learned my lesson. It just turns out a little bit better. I put, I put it directly on the flowers though. But see, I'm telling you, it's, it's just a lot better if you put it in the bag. But anyway, now I, I do always pretty much take it out and roll around in my hands though because I can never get the color to um, absorb without doing that. And you can see each different piece turns out a little bit different and that just has to do with the what the uh, trim is made out of. If it's more cotton, if it's more synthetic. Now that flower looks completely different. But that's because it started out as a cream color. So that I think turned out really, really, really nice. And I clean off the mat in between each time too because there's going to be little pockets of that color. So, and also too, people have asked me about this. My mat is a, um, is a uh, mixed media mat. And um, I will, if I can find it, I'll put the link in the description box. But I love this thing. Um, I will use it all the time. If you watch my videos, you'll see that I use it. And you can get just about anything on it and it comes off. And the great thing is, is you can just take this over to the sink and, you know, soak it in the sink. And it, everything, it'll come off. Now the yellow is a very bright yellow. Again, I did change my gloves because there's they, you know, would be contaminated. If you if you don't want to change your gloves, I would at least wash your hands because you're going to get um, one color and then you know you'll it'll contaminate the next color. Not the end of the world because if the two colors mix, it might make a color that you really like. But um, I would definitely if you're going to be you know doing this. Um, or like do all the yellows at one time, do all the pinks and reds or whatever. But I'm doing the different colors just to give you guys an idea of how well this works. Now I have done this again with um, distress inks and I've done it with alcohol ink. Um, you know, so again, I will put those um, videos in the description box, but um, you know, as I said, you know, this, this is a very, very cost effective way. Those distress inks, what are eight, nine dollars a bottle. So if you think how many drops that this takes, it's going to take that many drops of a distress ink. So, um, you know, if you just have a couple things that you want to do, then fine. But I just think that this is just a great way to do it. Anyway, and I will in a, in a week or so try this and, um, you know, see, see how they are. So anyway, those are our three colors and I'll show you a few more and then I'll see you guys real soon.